No expectations of me? Yes. Well, first of all, never hear an expectation. That's, that's thoughts. Expectations are thoughts. Don't hear it. Don't even hear expectations. Hear what the need is. What is the need that the person is asking for you to meet? You don't want to live up to expectations, but it is fun to meet needs. Do you think that, every, that human beings can always meet other people's needs if they're real? All of our needs can be met. I don't think you have to do it. There's several billion other people that could meet right. the other person's needs. Even if you could do it, you may choose not to. I see. And that won't be a problem. The other person can hear a no if they first feel empathy for their feelings and needs. That will leave them feeling at least that their feelings and needs matter. Right. That makes sense. Yes. But then again, you're not, you have to know how to say no in giraffe. That would be good for me to learn. Well, let me help you out. Never use the following words when you're saying no in giraffe. No. <laughs> I can't. I don't want to. I don't have time. It's not possible. Okay. Now you know how not to do it, right? Now here's how you do it. To say no in giraffe, you need to be conscious that a no is a poor expression of a need. So say the need that keeps you from saying yes. No. <laughs> so if you had giraffe ears on just now, you wouldn't have heard me saying no. You would have said, what is Marshall's need that's keeping him from saying yes? And you might have said back to me, Marshall, are you having a need for completion of other things you'd like to do right now? You see? You would have tried to hear the need behind the no. So what I said is, all no's are tragic expressions of a need. So say the need that keeps you from saying yes. Don't say no. The way that I have this framed, I, I feel as though I am um, responding to a person's expectations. So it's a work environment. Um, are you feeling afraid of being held responsible for the quality and quantity of the work that I'm doing? And this is to a supervisor. Are you feeling scared and need to protect uh, yourself? That might be the need that I hear you guessing. Are you feeling scared and need to protect yourself in this matter? I guess when I hear that, I feel afraid because I'm inferring that there's a danger and that they have a fear of some danger. If this is what you're guessing is alive in them, you're not saying it's right. See, we never say you are feeling. We always say, are you feeling? We may be wrong, but we're trying to get clear what's going on in this person. Are you feeling afraid and need to protect yourself? And taking the my performance part out of it. Is it you're yes, saying take yes. the me out of the Yes. Just giraffe. try to hear the feelings and needs without you. You've incur you know, we know what that is in this situation. You, they're talking to you about some things you've done or haven't done. So, in the context, it, we're, we're pretty clear what's going on. What we want to hear now is their feelings and needs. Are you feeling scared and need to protect yourself in this matter? Now, if this is in many settings where the people are not used to having feelings dealt with, this may, this, the other person might get very upset with having their feelings being talked about. In which case you do it silently. But if you're a giraffe, you hear feelings and needs in every message. Whether you do it out loud or not, politically we adjust when we might do it out loud. But, but we don't allow anything else into our consciousness except this other person's feelings and needs. Um, I think you said earlier that there's no compromise in giraffe communication. Yes. And yes. so I would find it instructional to know how the problem between the husband and wife was resolved. Yes. yes. And how it was a win-win situation for both of them. First, once there is empathy, people feel that their feelings and needs matter, which is done through the empathy. Uh, you don't have the competitiveness, you don't have the charge. So here's how it went. After they both heard each other, 
he heard that it was really hurt for her not to be trusted, that, that she could learn. And once he felt really understood how scared he was that if she were to do what she did when they first got married and overdraw the account, she could hear that he wanted to protect the family. I think most six-year-old children could resolve the conflicts that get nations into wars in which thousands are killed if you gave the six-year-olds, you said, look, here are the needs on both sides. Here are the resources. I'm confident most six-year-olds could solve the conflict. So in this, it doesn't take a genius. What did it do? She said, I want a trial period to learn how to do it. First, she said, I'm scared because, you know, you could go through a lot of money learning. So she agreed that during the trial period, he would supervise her until he felt comfortable that she knew how to do it. Okay, that took about seven minutes. But they hadn't been able to get to that in 39 years because of all the enemy images, the hurt, and so forth. Um, <clears throat> how do you deal with a situation when you have a, um, similar needs and you attempt to express them to each other and you sense as the emotions build up because of apparent competitive edge working, that our mutual needs are not being heard by either of the jackals. Then you either need to get a third party to give both of them the empathy they need to hear each other. So if the two people are in pain, they don't know how to give themselves enough empathy to be able to hear the other side, then you need to get a third party to give the empathy to each of them so that they can then hear each other. And that third party is, should be together with these two individuals or separately? There's different ways to do that. They're together, there's some advantages. But it could be that to give empathy to both sides separately and then help each side to hear the other side and then bring them together. Thank you.